everyone and welcome back to our wisdom series i know it's been a while but we took some time out to gather our thoughts gather ourselves and come back to you with a bang my name is dr cindy jordan and we are going places with jesus ministries so as you can see we're outside it is summer <laughs> we're in south florida and so anybody knows anything about South Florida in the summertime, it is hot. So please just enjoy it with me. Enjoy the scenery, but please plug in and listen to what we have to say today. So this is number one, numero uno, of our three-part series on a very interesting and special topic. So this topic is one of those areas in human life and human relationship that it goes beyond age, race, gender, status quo. It breaks all barriers when it comes to our human existence. So this is an area that a child, a youth, a teenager, a middle-aged person, even a senior person needs. It's vital for every one of us regardless of the stage of our life. And that is mastering the art of apologizing. Whoa, oh my gosh. How many of us, and I put us in there intentionally, struggle with grasping the concepts of how to apologize effectively? And guess what? It starts in childhood. It starts in when we're on the playground and we made a mistake and kicked someone or we stole something that we weren't supposed to steal or we said a little lie early on if we don't grasp the art or the mastery of apologizing it trickles throughout the rest of our lives but we're here today to curb some of those patterns and hopefully give you something extra to think about on this topic so we're going to start our first session um, talking about what is an apology and understanding the five languages of apology. And so most of the information from which I am forming a foundation of our discussion is coming from this book, this book right here. I grabbed this book this summer because I was like, listen, I'm on a journey to be the best Cindy that I can be for the honor and glory of God. And so that means getting into the nitty gritty of some of my weaknesses. And so I grabbed this book. It's the five apology languages, the secret to healthy relationships by Gary Chapman and Jennifer Thomas. And anybody know anything about Dr. Gary Chapman? He is the author of the five love languages, which has sold 20 million copies to date. Oh my gosh. And also a New York times bestseller, the five love languages. So he, joined together with Dr. Thomas, who is a psychologist, an author, a speaker, very well-renowned person in her field, and they created the five apology languages. So I just wanna put it out there, big disclaimer. This video is not sponsored, nor is it affiliated with the authors, nor the publishing company of this book. I am just a reader. I am just a lay person that grabbed the book, found it to be very interesting, and thought we could have a conversation about it. So today we're gonna to talk about apologizing and the first language of apology. So there are five. This series that we're gonna be embarking upon is only gonna look at three. I want you to grab the book yourself and get into a deeper study of this topic. So we're gonna start with the emotional side of apology. Many of us, Many of us are trapped in hurt, in pain, emotional heartache because we have felt that we were wronged. Someone did something, said something. As a matter of fact, it doesn't always have to be someone did or said something. It could be, the, it could be simply that they didn't say something or they didn't show up or they didn't do something that have wronged us or made us feel offended in some particular way and we're left with the emotional ramifications an apology may seem very simple but is rooted in so much healing and i want us to understand an apology 
is not just saying I am sorry. It goes way beyond that. It's deeper, it's wider. It has so much room and growth in it that could convict and cause us to really eradicate someone's hurt and pain if possible. Simply put, an apology is an offender's attempt to take responsibility, seek forgiveness, and attempt reconciliation for a wrongdoing that may have been caused to someone else. What is not an apology? An apology is not an antidote or a quick fix to make things better. Because sometimes we think that when we say I'm sorry or I apologize, poof, it's a magic wand and everything gets better. That's not what an apology is for. An apology, however, is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to admit that I was wrong, to admit that, hey, I made a mistake, I, I messed up, and I acknowledge my error, and I acknowledge the person's pain and hurt in which my behavior or my words may have caused to that person. Numero uno, the first type of apology is expressing regret. Many of us have different ways we apologize. Just like we have different languages for love, we have different ways we apologize according to this book, according to Dr. Gary Chapman and Dr. Thomas. There are five. We're only going to focus today on one. The first one is expressing regret. When we talk about expressing regret, it's getting into the emotional side, the heart-wrenching side, that side that revs our emotions and make us feel like, Ugh! oh my gosh, that side. Expressing regret is rooted, according to a quote in the book that says, an apology is birthed in the womb of regret. Simply saying I'm sorry is not getting into the emotional side, guys. We gotta express regret. We gotta say, hey, I was wrong. I acknowledge my weakness. I acknowledge my wrongdoings. And expressing that I am regretful tells the offended person that maybe this person really does care about my feelings and my emotions. An apology expresses regret. Understanding that I was wrong and accepting my faulty behavior is rooted in expressing regret. One of the things I want to talk about also is when we express regret, we're not shifting blame. Sometimes we're like, I'm sorry, but if you had only stopped talking in that moment, I would not have said what I said. An apology does not shift blame, nor does it try to manipulate the situation. Actually, it is just taking ownership for what we have done wrong. Some ways in which we could express regret could be simply, I know that I hurt you and I hurt you deeply. Could you forgive me? Or I feel badly for disappointing you. There's many different ways to express regret. Those are just a few examples. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10, for godly grief produces repentance that leads to salvation without regret whereas worldly grief produces death. There's power in apologizing, but there's even greater power when we, re when we respect that other person's emotions and express regret. So this is the end of our first of our three-part session on apology and understanding apologizing languages. Until next time, I want you to do me a favor. Take a pause reflect on what we talked about today pray and ask god say god did i hurt someone recently some of you don't need to pray we know we hurt somebody we don't even need to go that deep and ask god and say god help me to express regret help me to understand how i may have hurt that person mentally emotionally spiritually and ask god to give you a plan of action on how you can express regret so until next time, guys, thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Cindy Jordan. We are going places with Jesus Ministries. Be sure to be back right here for segment two as we continue our discussion on five languages of apology. But before then, I need you to stop, 
like this video, subscribe, and be sure to comment. We want to hear from you. Until then, God bless you.